Sunday Pentecost, even if you talked your way through the prelude. Um, it's still great to see all of you. Um, if you're with us online, we're thrilled to have you. You can find a link in the comment section to the bulletin. Um, for the rest of you who are gathered with this present, I invite you to grab a blue hymnal and turn to page 390 for our opening hymn. <laughs>
and honor him out of Egypt. That we have some the nations and plans of it. You prepared the ground for it. The kitchen for you and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow. And the tower and secret trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea. And its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall? So that all who pass by all the office race. The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it. And the beasts of the field have raised upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven. Behold, intend this mind. Preserve what your right hand has planted.
overwhelming Thanksgiving basket of food, an ample wallet or bank account, tons of people spilling into and out of the pews. None of that would be wrong. Even the Oxford English Dictionary defines abundance as an overflowing quantity of something. But abundance is more than that. It's also a state of being as much as it is a state of having things. So I wonder for you, what is your icon of abundance? An icon of depth, not necessarily breadth. For me, it is my maternal grandmother's home on the campus of Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. For more than 30 years, she served as the hallowed dorm mother in Jubilee Hall after all of my aunts and uncles had left the nest and my grandfather had died. By square footage, the home wasn't terribly large, but to walk through those big oak doors and around the corner to her home was to enter a place of comfort and challenge, rest and motivation, enchantment, and study. It was there that I could curl up on a blanket, in a blanket, on her cream and gold colored velvet sofa because my teenagers. And there I could be reminded that age is just a number. It wasn't a barrier for our relationship. So as she would watch her stories, her all my children in General Hospital and one life to live and say, ain't that a trip? <laughs> we would converse as peers and I felt so grown up and important. And it was there that she would make steaming bowls of cheese grits or salmon croquettes. It was there that I could ask any question and it wouldn't be dumb. I could tell any joke and it wouldn't be too silly. I could dress up into the nines, it would never be overdressed, and in fact, for her, it would probably still be underdressed. And it was there where she would send me out with students, where I imagined that one day I too would walk the campus of a university. I felt empowered and important. And it was there that I could return home at the end of the day, tell her a story of what I had done, on those manicured lawns, and she would remind me of the generations of bruised shoulders upon which I, and frankly, the whole nation stand. It was there, in Jubilee Hall, where I was taught and told that I could and I must dream big and go after whatever my mind and my heart could behold. It was there that I could have a soft place to land a strong foundation to launch, an ever-present place to rest and be fed. It was a meeting place for cousins, a place to laugh and to hide and to dream, and of course, to be spoiled beyond our own. It was a life of beauty, of gentleness, of challenge, of endless love, of being more than enough, of being the apple of my grandmother Lord's eye. It was a state of being wondrous, beloved, and empowered, not a state of having all the accoutrements of life. And all these years later it remains my icon of abundance. What is your icon? What is that place or that moment or that memory that encapsulates the fullness of endless love for you? Of being more than enough, of being at peace, of being in a state of wonder, or of rest, or encouragement, or belonging, and all not of your own making or doing. Allow that image to come to mind that moment or that person or that place where all is bright and wondrous and you are at home. That icon, that moment, that memory is what God came to earth to be for you. 
to be your home, your place of abundance, to be more than enough, to be your launching pad and your safe place to land. The thief only comes to steal and destroy, but I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Notice that Jesus does not say, I came to point out your sin. I came to set you straight. I came to give you a first class ticket out of hell. I came that you might have an abundant life. Now, don't get me wrong. Jesus cares about sin, but not because he's keeping a tabulation of your wrongs. Because Jesus is all about confronting any and all things that keep us from being God's beloved. Being selfishness, envy, stinginess, <coughs> exclusion, prejudice, or any acts of evil that deny your dignity and that of everyone else. Jesus came to give you life. Because you see, right before we heard this particular story, Jesus had just healed a man who'd been blind for since birth. And everyone had assumed that he was blind because either he sinned or his parents sinned, which was an ancient belief in that time, in the, in the ancient world. But Jesus is very clear. No, 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 it's not about sin. And so when he gets this man's sight, he's not only helping him to see, he's now making sure that he belongs in the community because as someone with a physical disability, he was not allowed to come to the temple for worship. He was excluded from everything. That was their culture because they figured you sin. But now he's welcomed into the fold. And so when they say, but why Jesus? Jesus goes on and gives the lesson that we heard this morning or the parable says, that's why I came, to give you an abundant life, to be your home, to make sure that you have belonging and community, that you have a relationship beyond your efforts or your skills or your bank account or what you've done or not done. But of course, there's an other side of abundance. It's not only your soft place to land, your launching pad, your home. Whatever that icon was and is for you, as a follower of Christ, you are called to make that experience as real and possible for everyone else. That they might know that same peace and wonder that God longs to be for you. What would it mean this week, no matter what comes your way, to awaken and ground yourself in your icon and know that that is actually who and God, who and what God wants to be for you. So yes, that means spending a little time in quiet with God. But to be home, to be at ease, and let it inform your day, how you relate to others how you approach all that comes your way with that reminder that no matter what happens, you have a home to always return to. I saw that powerfully embodied maybe five or six years ago when we were hosting Safe Nights, which was a, a winter shelter in the county for those who are homeless and it rotated each week from church to church. And each night someone says the blessing, either from the host church or the clients. And I remember one night a man gave the blessing and he had so much joy. He went over and over how grateful he was to God for this day, for the people who provided the food, for all the goodness that he experienced. He never once complained about his lot in life. He didn't bemoan, which is fine, but he kept just saying, I know that I'm your child and you have blessed me. I know you're watching over me. I know you have my back. Over and over. And when it was over, some of us gathered in the kitchen speechless. And here we were, all of us who were going home to our comfortable, heated homes, mumbling about the day or the dishes we had to do. And here was someone who materially had very little that he had an abundant heart where he knew to whom he belonged and to whom he had his back. And it filled him with strength, with joy, 
and with patience. How ironic that those who came to serve ended up being blessed by the ones we serve. As you know, or maybe you don't know, October is what we call stewardship or annual giving, in which we invite you to think and reflect and pray and then make a financial commitment for the next year. And for some people, it's just filling out a pledge card and sticking it in an offering tray, adding a few bucks from the previous year. But something that we did last year that we're still doing this year is that rather than giving you your pledge card at the beginning, which a lot of people fill out and turn it in, we're giving it to you at the end of the season. And the hope that each week as we reflect on different manifestations of abundance, abundance of community and abundance of compassion and abundance of love and mercy, you might be spurred to think about how you've experienced abundance for call to make it real in the lives of others. Stewardship season isn't simply about numbers, it's about your heart. It's about your priorities. It's about your partnership in co-creating God's dream on earth. And it is my deepest prayer that this journey for you will not be one of guilt or shame, but one of honesty and goodness and faith. No matter what this week holds, you remain the reason that God came to earth. You were God's dream come true. And you and me and this whole wide world have lives worth living, lives worth celebrating, lives worth sharing, and above all, lives worth beholding. Not because of anything we can do or don't do, but because of a God who simply can't get enough of you. What more could you ask for? to stand or assume whatever posture of reverence is most comfortable for you and turn to page 8 in your bulletin. Using the words of the Nicene Creed, let us affirm our faith in the God who gives life. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, we God and not made, for the one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge us the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
predestined in the transformative power of God's love and spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy. Strengthen the resolve of your church throughout the world, that together we press on toward the goal of your heavenly calling in Jesus Christ. In a diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for all the diplomatic congregations and communities, all victims of terrorism, war, and violence, and for those who foster and perpetuate such acts. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless fields and orchards in the hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with an abundance of harvest of good fruit. fruit. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all the earth, who desire peace and justice between nation and peoples. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, and cities, that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayers. God of all compassion in Christ, you lovingly poured yourself out on the one for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, who struggle with the mental health, who cry out for justice through hunger, and all in any need, included. abundance, 
Today we are focusing on the abundance and gift of community, and I'm going to invite Becky Hackley up to share her testimony.
gives of abundance. And so that's when we will pass out our pledge cards. But more than that, we will celebrate what abundance means to all of you in worship. We'll have our trumpeters here with us. And then afterwards, we're going to have a festive coffee hour. And we want you to bring something that reminds you of abundance to your tummy. So bring your favorite appetizer or your favorite dessert, and we will share them. Um, with each other, and we will also make our own giant stained glass out of paper. And each person will have a piece um, that in which you can write on your experience of abundance, and we will um, hang it up in here throughout the remainder of um, the stewardship season. And so um, I just pray that this will be a true journey of spiritual growth for all of you. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. This quiet during the prelude or postlude? Oh my god. <laughs>
fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to faithfulness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and the faithful of every generation, we lift our voice with all creation as we sing.
Uh, this is not the table. This is the table of the Lord, not the church. It is made ready for those who love God and those who aren't sure what they think about God. So come you who have been here often and you who have not been here at all. You who have tried to follow and you who aren't sure where to begin. Come because it is Christ who bids you come. It's Christ who meets you here. Behold who you are. May, May we, we become what we perceive.
All right, you tell us the day? September 20th. And how many years? 15. 15, all right. And we've got Tony and Beckman. What day is yours? Tony and Beckman, I said Beckman. I was thinking that. All right, what day? Tuesday the 10th and 15. 15. 14, congratulations. All right, let us pray for those celebrating another year of marriage. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants. So love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience and wisdom and true godliness that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, bless, preserve, and strengthen you in joy and peace. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, bless, preserve, and strengthen you in joy, peace, and love. Amen. Happy anniversary, everyone. All right, a couple of announcements that I want to highlight. If you have not signed up, which is pretty much most of you, for one of our congregational listening sessions, please do. There's a sign-up sheet on the tables at coffee hour. Uh, we want to hear from you, and you, here's a great opportunity. Um, so if you don't participate, you lose all rights to complain. Not that I'm stopping with you, but nonetheless. But do sign up. There's, there's one right after this service. No one has signed up, so if you're available, please sign up, and you can do it right after service. Um, or there's two next week at 9 and 11.15. Those are the last of the in-person ones. After that, they will be on Zoom. So please make sure. Who's leading the one at 11? Oh, me and them? So if you do sign up, you will leave them, and then there'll be some next week. Again, the 29th, one service at? 9.30. Somebody's going to show up at 2.15. But nonetheless, 9.30, bring your favorite dessert or appetizer. It's going to be a joyful day. Um, uh, what else? Just reading up to this. Where do we turn in the forms that you gave us last Sunday to fill out? When you have your cottage meeting. And you do it on Zoom? Yeah. Uh, oh, if you do it on Zoom, give it to one of the restroom members. Okay. Or me. I'm the sign in the Yeah. Um, I believe that is it. I'm <coughs> like forgetting something. Um, Soul School for Kids started today, and so it'll be on the second or fourth Sunday. Youth group will next meet in four weeks, and we'll be, they'll be, not I, but they will be starting their garden and planting the planter boxes and all that after service. So, parents, please remember, youth group on the fifth will be after the service, not at five. All right, please stand. Go forth into the world and claim your abundance of life. Claim your home with God. Claim your birthright and your belonging. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit be with you. And remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our final penalty verse is 1, 2, and 6. Yeah. 